This is a true tale of Africa, and a place which men have yet to change. It is a place where all the people are as innocent as children. The story is set in a country covered by forest, as the land around the old man's village was before the farmers came and cut and burned the trees. The hills are cloaked by jungle, from the peaks blue in the day's heat to the cool shadows by the stream. He has been to this place and seen such wonders of the earth as it was in its innocence before the coming of fire. He met a strange tribe there, like men, yet shorter and much stronger, their mouths large, their teeth as powerful as a leopard's, their muscles hard as ebony. They liked to show their strength, and when they shouted, their voices were heard an hour's walk away. At first, when the old man met the tribe, he was very afraid and wanted to hide. Yet he discovered they are usually a peaceful race, and he came to know them not as dangerous enemies, but as gentle friends. He was shown this place by an English woman. She knew this tribe as the old man knows those who live in his village. She had stayed amongst them for many years, walked with them through their lands, and given names to each of them. To her, they were like her family. The English woman refers to them as chimpanzees. The old man calls them the people of the forest. This is the story of a chimpanzee called Fifi, who lives in the forest with her family. She's 25 years old, a middle-aged mother, and she spends a good deal of her time letting the present swirl around her, as if she's daydreaming of the past. Apparently lost in these long gone days, their mother withdraws from the play and the children have to look to each other for company. The most important events in Fifi's life started 20 years ago, when she was a gentle five-year-old. At that time, her two older brothers, Fabian and Figan, were playful young rivals. Fabian was the bigger and the stronger of the two brothers, and he frequently made this clear to young Figan. Figan did not like being inferior to anyone, but there was very little he could do about it. Fifi watched as he went off on his own to vent his feelings by hitting and kicking stones and throwing them. Fabian ignored the behavior of his adolescent brother. Fabian preferred the company of the adult males. And Fifi had little interest in her big brothers. She preferred the tiny baby, Flint, who had been born five weeks earlier to their mother, Flo. The 
At this age, Fifi, like all young females, was captivated by small infants. She was longing for a chance to touch him. Adolescent Figgen was not interested in babies. He wanted to play. And with Fabian gone, his sister Fifi would do. But Fifi refused. She was only interested in staying close to the new baby. Her refusal to play annoyed Figgen, and he showed it. Flo, with her distinctive button nose, was about 45 years old. She was a tolerant mother. If Fifi became too persistent, Flo didn't punish her. Instead, she tried to distract her daughter by tickling her. But Fifi would not be put off. And so all Flo could do was walk away, taking Flint with her and leaving Fifi frustrated. Flo and her family were not alone in the forest. They were part of a community of 50 individuals. Not always staying together, each could wander around in the forest with friends or alone for days or even weeks at a time. During their absence, there might have been changes in the hierarchy. So each male had to re-establish his position in the community by force if necessary. Fifi decided to retreat. Her mother hid and Figgen soon followed. Fifi fled up a tree. From her vantage point in a vine, Fifi watched the turmoil. Fights and injuries sometimes occurred, but more usually each tried to intimidate the others by displays of strength and making the most noise. During struggles for power, allegiances were useful. Brothers always helped each other. Friends, on the other hand, could be fickle. The struggle was ended by a tiny grass cut on a tender finger. After a final display of strength, the conflict ended. The 
losers began to pay homage. The first bowing submissively. Figan undoubtedly longed to be the dominant male, to be able to ignore his underlings. Friends and families greeted each other. Fabin hand kissed an anxious female to settle her worries. Another young female was still nervous of the big male. By kissing her, he reassured her that all was well again. Fifi remained in her vine. She didn't bother to greet anyone, yet to ignore protocol was unwise. Fifi was quick to make amends. She knew the old male could be placated with a little kiss. Now that everything had calmed down, Fifi could again turn her attention to her baby brother, Flint. Figgin seemed bored. He probably wanted to join the adult males who, to re-establish bonds of friendship, had started to groom each other. Grooming helped calm everybody down. Flo was grooming Fifi, maybe to distract her attention from Flint. Figgin seemed to resent the attention his sister was getting from their mother. But he was pretty adept at diverting attention to himself. Figgin usually got what he wanted. Fifi knew her family well, and as she grew up, she came to know the others. There was Odd Eye and his shifty looking brother, Wurzel. Baldy McGregor was a gentle old chimp, known to be peaceable and patient, but he could not be called handsome. And there was the orphan, Willy Wally Suck Suck. His mother died, and ever since, he'd silently suckled air. His sister made the sounds. And there was Poop. She inspected everything with an almost scientific curiosity, even a dead rat. Finally, there was Ollie Longface and her daughter Gilka. She was a nervous individual who tended to avoid social gatherings. With everyone peaceful and as if to make friends, Ollie Longface approached the grooming group. 
But Ollie Longface's nervousness made the others uneasy, and they tended to ignore her. Ollie Longface's nervousness may have been due to a goiter, an enlarged thyroid gland in her throat. Being rejected undoubtedly made Ollie even more timid. Totally ignored, she left them and returned to her lonely life, followed by Gilka. Fifi always had her family for company, but Gilka had no choice but to play on her own. mother watched, always nervous about anything Gilka did. Gilka's favorite game was pirouetting. But whenever her mother moved away, she had to stop her fun and follow. If you watch them leave. Gilka seemed destined for a life of loneliness. Fifi was never lonely, especially now that she had a little brother. never occurred to Fifi that she might be a bother to Flo and Flint. But that Figgin was a nuisance, that was obvious. Fifi's big brother, Faven, returned, and he found that nothing had changed. Fifi was still frustrated, and Fagan was still demanding all the attention. Part of Fifi's character was to never give up. At last, her persistence paid off as Flo groomed Figgin. She accomplished her goal. Flint had never been away from his mother before, and when he called for her, Flo quickly responded.
This would not stop Fifi from trying again. But Flo moved off, taking the infant with her and leaving Fifi frustrated again. This time Flo took Flint out of reach and started to feed. Fifi ignored her brother Figgin, who was left on his own. She climbed into a tall tree, close to Flo, who was eating leaf buds, which were sweet and sticky. Fifi used leaves to wipe her lips. Then she watched the forest creatures prepare for night. Red-tailed monkeys scampered through the branches. Bushbuck stepped daintily through the undergrowth. Baboons relaxed in the safety of the trees. Soon the sun started changing the color of the landscape. Fifi's large brother, Fabian, climbed a palm tree for the night. A vine hammock was fine for resting in during the day, but Fifi knew that to sleep comfortably at night, it was better to build a large, soft nest as Fabian was doing. Soon all the chimpanzees started to prepare for the night. Figgin didn't make a nest, he only made himself a pillow. Maybe he was showing he didn't need a soft nest. He was tough. Until Flint's birth, Fifi had shared Flo's nest, but now she had to make her own, strong enough to last the night. It wasn't easy. While her mother relaxed, Fifi tested her nest. Fagan discovered that acting tough could be hard. Fifi, on the other hand, could relax. The others were settling in their comfortable nests as night approached. Finally, when everyone else was asleep, Figgin constructed a big, comfortable nest. Fifi had awoken, but she probably did not care what he was doing as long as he did not pester her. At sunrise, the chimpanzees stirred, some waking quicker than the others. One woke up his neighbor. Flo left Flint lying in their nest 
and set about straightening her ruffled hair. Fifi decided to lie in. Obviously, Figgin had not slept well at all. Fifi did not choose a good morning to sleep in. A cold wind was coming down from the mountains. Storm clouds began to gather. Chimpanzees had never discovered how to make shelters, but Fifi found some protection under a tree. Baldy McGregor, however, had nothing between his head and the sky. Sometimes storms triggered off rain dances. It was as if the chimpanzees were competing with that sound maker in the sky, matching his noises, shaking trees to prove themselves equal and thereby reassuring themselves. Fagin wanted to make a rain dance of his own, but adolescents take a risk showing off. The big males didn't like it, so Fagin quickly showed them he was only playing. <laughs> Luckily for him, the male accepted this ploy. Fifi had become cold in the rain and started to eat. Flint hadn't. He'd stayed warm in Flo's protective embrace. Figgin wanted to play with his sister, maybe to get warm too. But he forgot one basic rule. Rain makes trees slippery. It was a pretty heavy fall, but no harm was done, except maybe to his pride. Figgin hated making a fool of himself, so he acted as if falling was part of his game. So Fagin gave up and looked a little sheepish. As 
the sun dried the forest, Fifi came down to rejoin the family. She tried to get hold of Flint again, and as usual, Flo tickled her to try and put her off. Fabian arrived and watched as his younger brother playfully began to pester his sister. Calm and easygoing, Fabian sized up the situation. Eventually, Fabian chased Figgin off and left him up. Flo was worried, but Fifi was not. Figgin was out of her way at last, taking out his frustration on a broken tree. Fabian was relaxed and unconcerned. Figgin pulled an ugly face. The family game had made Flo playful, and she lay on the grass dangling flint from her feet while tickling him. Fifi watched the new game her mother was playing with the infant. give up. And then surprisingly, Flo let her have Flint. So she took him away to keep him to herself. This was not to Flo's liking. was wise. To have left inexperienced Fifi alone with the infant was risky. Danger could appear at any moment. There were enemies in the forest. A young male, soon joined by his mother, was fighting with a baboon. When the big males got involved, the baboons grabbed their young and fled. The fight now became a deadly hunt. Chimpanzees have a formidable set of teeth with pronounced canines. They're ideal for killing. Ah. 
meat made them impetuous, and the rules changed when they'd killed. They refused to share. Even the dominant male had to beg. He dare not just snatch the meat. This would have led to a fight in which he might have been stripped of his position. Status was more important than meat. Fifi spied a baboon with Gilka chasing it. Gilka was not hunting it. All she wanted was a playmate. Not surprisingly, Ollie Longface was nervous, but she did not need to worry. Gilka and the baboon were becoming friends. It was the baboon's mother who disapproved and broke up the game. Gilka returning as usual to Ollie Longface. After eating meat, the chimpanzees felt bloated and relaxed. Baldy McGregor groomed a friend. Willy Wally Suck Suck, Suckled Air. Warzel struggled to remove something from his ears. Fabin stretched out, looking big and mature, while adolescent Figgin pulled more faces. Flint was now five months old. Suddenly, Fifi noticed that he was taking his first steps. If he took the sleeping flint, tired out from walking. But Fifi wanted flint awake. As usual, Fifi was determined. And as usual, Figgin got involved with his feet. But this time, it was Flint who took umbrage. While Figgin and Fifi were occupied with each other, Flint practiced walking. It was not easy, but sticking out his tongue seemed to help. Gilka pirouetted close by.
Their playing made Ollie Longface nervous. Flo might not approve. So she left, forcing Gilka to follow her. Left alone, Flint went back to his family. Fifi was soon on the spot. She wanted to take Flint for a ride on her back. Gilka saw her little friend in difficulties, so she went over to help. But Flo wanted no interference from Gilka, and to make this clear, she stepped on her. Flo was once more in charge of Flint. Fifi followed her past Gilka, who made a rude hand sign, which Fifi returned. Once again, Gilka was left without a playmate and only her mother for company. By following their mother, Flo's large family learned how to survive in the forest. By watching her, they discovered what plants were edible, which trees would bear fruit at what time, and how to find their way. Figgin liked the lead. He was eight years old, and he knew the way. In the meantime, Flint practiced back riding, but it was not easy. He often slid off and had to discover other ways of traveling. Flint's antics were tolerated by Flo, but occasionally she needed a rest. She was about 45 years old and could not always keep up with Fabian and Fagan. Fifi made use of the opportunity to take Flint, thereby helping her old mother so that they could continue their journey. With Flo not objecting anymore to her daughter carrying the infant, Fifi had at long last fulfilled her ambition. To Fifi, the future must now have seemed full of promise. Over the next few weeks, Flint learned to ride properly on Flo's back instead of hanging on underneath. This made life easier for his mother. Fifi was still allowed to take Flint, but at this moment, she did not want to. They were approaching a termite mound and a special delicacy lay in store. Flo plucked a grass stem to use as a tool for catching the termites and then inspected the mound. Maybe her eyes were not as good as they used to be. For Fifi had no trouble finding a mud-covered entrance 
and poked it open. She inserted the stem. Termites bit onto the grass tool in defense of their nest so that Fifi was able to extract them as a crunchy meal. Even though Flint reached for the grass tool, it would be years before he could master the technique of fishing for termites. Fifi noticed that Figgin had joined the big males on another mound, even though all he could do was watch. Baldy McGregor arrived. He stood and walked upright more often than the other chimpanzees. Ollie Longface and Gilka joined him. Baldy McGregor saw that the termite mound was crowded. He waited in case a place came free, preferring to join the males. At the female's mound, Ollie picked a vine stalk, an implement she would find unsuitable and discard. In the meantime, Gilka had found a termite hole, but seemed nervous that her mother might take it. And she was right. Ollie let Gilka have a turn. But her patience did not last long, and she clumsily tried to distract her daughter by using her long lips to tickle Gilka's neck. Catching the termites was not one of Ollie Longface's accomplishments. Her nervous movements made the termites fall off. Fifi was now allowed to take Flint whenever she wanted. It gave Flo a chance to relax. But Flint was getting heavy, and when he held on tight, his grip pinched. Fifi had lost out. Having finally been allowed access to Flint, she could not cope. For the first time, she returned him to flow. Flint was no longer a baby. He was a little boy now. Fifi's behavior to little boys was different, as Flo soon noticed. It was just the same as Figgin's behavior towards Fifi. Fifi seemed to blame Flint for her problems. 
<laughs> now Fifi ignored Flint and sulked. <laughs> Having power over someone seemed to make Figgin feel good. The conflicts within the family alarmed Flint. He went to one of the big males, and Odd Eye consoled him. Now that Fifi was not monopolizing Flint all the time, he was able to meet others in the community. He soon discovered that all young females wanted to hold and cuddle him. He also discovered that they wanted to carry him, but some did not have Fifi's know-how. Then another mother appeared on the scene with a newborn, and Fifi's insatiable interest in infants was aroused again. She was quick to inspect the new arrival. Fagin hastened to join them and, as usual, foiled Fifi's plans. But she would not give up, even though the mother had taken the infant up a tree. She was as determined as ever. Figgin looked bored. He may well have wondered why his sister took so much trouble to be close to infants. However, he was a typical adolescent male and wanted to be with his big brother. Fabian, however, preferred the company of adult males. He joined them as they departed leaving the rest of his family behind. Figgin wondered whether Flo would follow. He was determined that the time had come for him to be with the big males. Flo did not seem so sure and decided to stay near her adolescent son. She may have assumed that her daughter would follow, but Fifi, now seven years old, was too engrossed in the infant to notice their departure. Fifi was frustrated. She was not allowed to touch the infant. Suddenly she realized she was apart from her family. She had no idea which way they had gone. Finally, she chose a direction in which to search for her mother.
she came upon a monitor lizard. Say she retreated up a tree in case it should attack. Maybe a tall tree offered more safety, and it could be used as a vantage point to find flow. But it made the forest appear even more vast. How could she ever find her mother in this big place? At last, in the distance, she spied Flo and Flint. She was obviously overjoyed at being reunited with her family. And they seemed equally pleased she was back with them including her two big brothers. <laughs> Over the next year, Flo's family survived on the varied edible fruits and nuts, flowers and leaves, which the forest provided. Their knowledge even extended to the use of medicinal plants, Although Flint still suckled at three years old, he also ate solid food. Fifi was just content to watch Flint, who at this age could never sit still. Fagin was now 12, and almost as big as his brother Fabin. Fifi saw that Ollie Longface had given birth. At last, Kilka had a little brother who might become a playmate. Fifi was no longer interested in infants. The previous one had got her into difficulties. Apart from Flo and Ollie, there were many mothers in the community. Although females might have a family, in general they were more solitary than males. They lived in a promiscuous society, so no one knew who had fathered each infant. From time to time, mothers came together. Their youngsters invariably enjoyed these meetings, gave them a chance to mix with others of their own age. <coughs> Eat. 
Even Gilka was at this gathering and had a rare chance to play with her peers. <coughs> For some reason, Flint stayed aloof. Fifi may have wondered why he did not join in. But Flint had other plans. He kicked a tree trunk as if showing off his strength. Then he tested it on Gilka. <laughs> All the noise was too much for Ollie Longface. She decided to leave. As usual, Gilka was obliged to follow. However, she could look forward to her infant brother being old enough to be a playmate. Flint was a ruffian. He could afford to be. His mother was the dominant female of the community and would always defend him. <laughs> the subordinate mothers were fed up and decided to take their youngsters away. But in spite of their squabbling, the youngsters wanted to stay. <laughs> Each mother had her own means of removing a recalcitrant offspring. To see a friend apart is always sad. Finally, the last reluctant youngster was dragged off. Fifi stopped Flint following his little friend who was getting covered in leaves. Flint had to go another way. Figgin never helped discipline Flint. Even when his small brother pestered their tolerant mother, Figgin ignored him. Flint was upset. He had been dragged through some dirt. Desperately, he tried to clean himself with some leaves. The family relaxed, little realizing there was trouble in the air. Someone was in serious trouble. Flo and her family were worried. Mm -hmm. 
Something was moving in the undergrowth. It was Baldy McGregor. His legs useless, struggling to reach his friends. His skin was raw. But apart from that, he did not seem to be injured. <laughs> Polio had come into the forest from the outside carried by men. They could not understand what had happened to him. Mortally afflicted, gentle Baldy McGregor could not survive. Fifi discovered he was not the only victim. A young male had suffered a paralyzed arm and weak legs. Willy Wally Suck Suck had a paralyzed ankle. The sickness had swept through the forest, affecting a quarter of the community and killing Ollie Longface's infant. She seemed incapable of accepting the death. She carried the little corpse with her for three days as if hoping it might somehow revive. Gilka would not have a playmate after all. To make matters worse, she had a semi-paralyzed wrist and would never pirouette again. High in the trees appeared Fabin. Flo's family was not to go unscathed. Fortunately, Fabin was strong and could walk upright, which he did for the rest of his life. Flint was too young to understand the tragedy. Now that he was crippled, Fabin returned to be near his mother, his brothers, and his sister. He became like a youngster again, often playing with Flint,
tragedy had brought the family members together again and seemed to strengthen the family bonds. This did not mean that Figgin stopped competing. Mm. Old Flo tried to give her children equal attention as best she could. But they expected a lot from their mother. Flint was spoilt the most. He always demanded immediate attention from his tolerant mother. Fifi was in trouble. She was now an adolescent and seemed puzzled that a male was so interested in her. Her brothers did not see anything to worry about. Flo and Flint tried to help Fifi, but at first they were unsuccessful. they distracted the male and gave Fifi an opportunity to creep away. The family was changing. Fifi would soon discover she liked males after all. Fabian and Fegan had become friends, but Flint still acted like a baby. Even at five years old, he still tried to suckle. Flo's milk was drying up. This frustrated Flint, who seemed convinced she was withholding it on purpose. Figgin and Fabian ignored their little brother who expressed his anger by hitting his mother and sister. He also threatened anyone else who came close. <laughs> the others dared not retaliate. Flint was the youngest son of the dominant family. Become a spoiled brat. All the other chimpanzees were driven away. Figgin watched as his little brother went to Fifi, giving her the rough end of the stick. Flo nearby, Fifi did not dare hit him back and went into a fit of fury. Flo had rarely disciplined Flint. Her daughter saw the result. <laughs> 
Flo was getting too old to handle such a temperamental son. The only thing she could do was walk away. Unable to suckle, Flint sucked his thumb. As time went by, Fifi and Flint saw why Flo's mood had changed. She had become pregnant and had now given birth. Flint was no longer the baby of the family. Flint went over to his mother, but not to see the infant. He still wanted to suckle. All Flo could do was move away. Flint followed, soon joined by the rest of the family. The relationships in Flo's family barely altered over the next few weeks. But one day, there was a change. Flint had become happy once more. Fifi may have guessed that Flint's joy was because the infant had died. Flo accepted her five-year-old son as the baby of the family once more. Flint was in seventh heaven.
two and one half years passed peacefully. The forest offered plenty of food, and the streams provided clean drinking water. Fifi heard Flint crying. He was over eight years old and still a baby. Yet his cries were now well founded. Flo was dead. Flint was distraught as he inspected his mother's body. the flies off her. Finally, Flint lay down close to his mother. Flo was 53 years old. Her heart had failed. Others arrived slowly as if to share in Flint's grief. Flint climbed a tree in which to make a nest just above the stream. Soon the whole family gathered. Friends began to drift away, but Flint did not move from his nest. Even when Fifi and his big brothers left, he refused to follow. Flint stayed near his mother's body for three weeks. He died of grief. Perhaps Fifi daydreams of those long lost years. That was a decade ago. Since then, life has been kinder to Fifi, who now has three children. Fabian learned to manage with his paralyzed arm. He supported Fagan's quest to become the dominant male. Fagan is finally getting the respect he always seemed to want. Fanny will probably be like her mother and grandmother, tolerant and kind. Fifi's eldest son, Freud, worships the big males just as Figgin had done.
his idol is his Uncle Figgin. Frodo, her other son, aged five, might well be Flint. He not only looks like him, but in many ways also behaves in the same fashion. The baboons still share the forest. They make Fanny nervous. But her brother, Frodo, enjoys stoning them. Frodo relishes teasing the baboons. Little Fanny eggs him on. Then she hides in case a fight starts up. But it's only a game. Frodo likes the baboons. They're his friends. Fifi's world has become serene. The people of the forest are content. This might be paradise. Then, strange things start happening in the forest. An odd mist drifts through the canopy of leaves. There are strange sounds, unheard before. The people of the forest do not know it, but the time of flames is drawing near. <laughs> 